21 false times I lived in to my memory that I could remember and stuff. That's what I did. I spent some years at a couple of homes, but after that, you know, I was out there in the wilderness and stuff, man. So I went through home after home. I wasn't always the best kid, man. So, you know, parents don't got a connection to you and stuff. They could just get them up out of here, you know what I mean? And just send you off and stuff with your little trash bags of clothes and, and all of that. And you just, you know, you got to figure it out somewhere else. 21 foster homes, that's that's the the exact number that I have in my memory. Yeah. You heard it you heard it in my songs a couple of times. And Hey, y'all. Welcome to another episode of Queen's Vantage Podcast. Listen, you asked and I delivered. E.G. the Beast and I got a chance to sit down at the 50th anniversary of hip hop, but y'all wanted to get to know him. So I'm welcoming back to the Queen's Vantage what throne. Up, what up? E.G. the Beast. I'm here, man. I'm happy to be here. What's up, Ebony? Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Appreciate you. Yes. Super, yeah. super excited to be here for sure, for sure. Thank you. Yeah. I'm excited to have you. Well, yeah. you know, I'm here, man. We, you know, phys we, we manifested here physically right here. Right. Third dimension. We right here. And I had to say, it's been love since day one. At least I felt that way. From yeah. The, from yeah, the most moment I, I met you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, felt that, I felt that way too, you know. Uh, a lot of chemistry. Um, you're a very down to earth person and Thank stuff. You. you know what I'm saying? And you know, I can tell that you're a really smart person as well. So I like talking to people like that. You know, yeah. it's easy to have conversation and make connection. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So as y'all all know, EG released his last album, Black Boy. Black Boy. Which is fire. Yeah. I think I still surprise him because I'll, I'll hit you up and be like, yo, I just listened to it. And you're like, you, do. you like yeah, that you song? Yeah, you do. I'll be like, man, you like that song? You're like, hell yeah, I got black sons. They need to hear stuff like this. So yeah. that type of stuff is so powerful for me because that was my objective, yeah. you know, with making this project was to try to like make a, a, a good message and stuff, you know what I'm saying, yeah. for everybody to hear, especially the young fellas and stuff because I... I still have a lot of that inside of my heart, you know, yeah. where I come from in the past. Yeah. And in a way, when I make that type of music, I'm speaking to my inner child, you know, mm -hmm. that went through them traumas and things like that. And it helped me. You feel me? Because, yeah. like, look where I'm at right now. You know, like, a lot of black men that's my age, you know, I'm 32. So, you know, uh, you know, a lot of black men that's my age, they not here. You know what I mean? They in yeah. a jail cell or something or on drugs and, you know, something crazy, man. But I feel like I've uh, uh, I've, I've made it past that. So yeah. whatever it is that I have that has brought me here, I want to try to spread it on to the other young life as well. And Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, Get, I'm, I'm hoping to dig into that a little bit today. Yeah, most definitely. Um, because I think that you, and I've been privileged enough to get to know you behind the scenes. Um, but I think you have an incredible story. I think your music speaks a part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's what got you here today. And I know that you face some adversities. Man. Um, some that, like, I can relate to. Mm -hmm. And then some that completely wowed me. Yeah. Um, and I know a lot of that shows in your music. So I was going to ask you what fuels that music. And I, and I probably could answer the question to say adversity. Most definitely. You yeah. know, uh, trial and tribulation. You know, I, I'm not, I don't know the Bible's. Uh, word for word I don't know the Bible Word for word But I do know It talks about Your soul being like Gold And mm. stuff And then You know Trial and tribulation And stuff is needed Because it's like Putting gold through fire yeah. And stuff And when you Heat up gold And stuff It purifies it Yeah, You know what I'm talking about So in a way It's saying that Trial and tribulation purifies your soul and stuff. It puts fire to the gold in your soul to purify the gold yeah. in your soul. So, you know, yeah, adversity, trial, and tribulation, yeah. when you embrace it and stuff and, you know, do what you got to do to get through it, it, it does make you a better person at the end of the day. You yeah. feel me? Yeah. So I want to talk about the album. I also want to talk about, you know, some of the new music that you have coming. Um, but I want to dive a little bit deeper into your adversity. Yeah. Um, because there was one thing that you shared with me, and I was growing up in the foster care system. Yeah, yeah. Um, foster system, so, that's a big part of my foundation yeah. and stuff, yeah. Um, and I know that that's had 
I, I could imagine a positive impact in some aspects, but also some negative imp- imp- impact on your life. Um, but there was one thing that you shared specifically of the number of homes. Man, 21 foster homes, man. 21 foster homes I lived in to my memory that I could remember and stuff. That's what I did. I, I spent a couple, I spent some years at a couple of homes, but after that, you know, I was out there in the wilderness and stuff, man. So I went through home after home. I wasn't always the best kid, man. So, you know, parents don't got a connection to you and stuff. They could just yeah. be like, man, get this, get him up out of here. You know yeah. what I mean? And just send you off and stuff with yeah. your little trash bags of clothes and, and yeah. all of that. And you just, you know, you got to figure it out somewhere else. But uh, 21 foster homes, that's that's the the exact number that yeah. I have in my memory. Yeah. You heard it. You heard it in my songs a couple of times, and yeah. yeah. And what was that like for you? Like, what was that like bouncing around? Uh, a couple of times, the first couple of times and stuff, because I had a my first foster mother, Andrea. Her name is Andrea Trishel. She, she was she's my mom. Like she like my foundation. You yeah. know what I mean? Of all the homes I've been in, she made me who like I really am. Yeah. You know what I mean? Her and her husband Rodney as well. They they built me and yeah. stuff, and they made me prepared for the journey of going through the rest of the homes. Yeah. But I spent most of my time with them, and um, that was hard. Yeah. That was hard leaving them. Yeah, that was like the times I remember where I was like crying and. Shit, damn near clawed at the ground trying to get back in the dough. You know what I'm yeah. talking about? Yeah. So them two times with them, what that was my hardest. But after that, shit, it was like clockwork. Yeah. You know, it became easier for me because they had strengthened me. Yeah. And then also have to deal with that pain of leaving them. It's like it just kind of like put a callus on me a little bit. You feel yeah. me? So I was able to kind of slide through them other homes. Cool. But I wasn't always doing good and shit like school and like, yeah. you know what I mean? With the friends and like all that type of stuff. Having certain qualities yeah. that your family teach you, like a good upbringing. I was yeah. missing some of that, you know yeah. what I mean? So I had to kind of dig deep in and find those things throughout my experiences in life. And that's what the positive side of the 21 foster homes is, is that... Yeah. You know, me having the soul that I have, I'm blessed. I'm blessed to have a good soul, man. Yeah. I take a lot of pride in that shit. Like, I ain't gonna let nobody tell me otherwise. Like, I know I'm a good person, and I, I take a lot of pride in that and yeah. being kind, and uh, being good to people, man, and and making exchanges with human beings on this earth. Like, I feel like that's what life is really about and shit. Yeah. And um, you know, I was able to with my good heart and soul and my intelligence that was given unto me. By Andrea and Rodney. Yeah. You know, I was able to pick and pull the things that I that were essential. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Through for certain friends or OGs or whatever, you know. Yeah. So you were able to gravi- gravitate toward the good that had been poured in I was, you. Yes, just like that. I was yeah. able to gravitate towards the good and understand it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And understand it, be able to break it down and put it into my, my lifestyle. Yeah. You know what I mean? And what you're doing now... Um, I think using your music as like a form of therapy, but also like not only to, I think, that purification of your soul, but the purification of others. Because how many other young black men are out there in systems like foster care, juvenile hall? Um, But what was the pivotal moment for you, that life shift where you were like, okay, I'm going to step away from the bad things that are happening and really step into the good and start to and start to create. That's crazy. My mom. So my mom, Margaret McCain, rest in peace, she passed away last year. She spent a lot of her life doing, like, crack, man, and doing, like, drugs and stuff. And, uh, you know, it caught up to her and stuff in her light, in her later years. But she was young with seven kids, though. Yeah. She was still in her 30s with seven of us, you know what I mean? And tell us, where do you fall in line with those seven kids? I'm in the middle. Me and my brother Maurice, we the, we the middle kid, we the middle childs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we didn't went through it in life. We was the both. Me and Maurice, we was the two children that was lost in, you know, out of everybody because everybody had the chance to live with my mom and yeah, and 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 have that family kind of foundation, their biological family foundation. Me and Maurice, we was disappeared off into the abyss and stuff, yeah. you know. But um, what was I saying? My mom, 
She was mm-hmm. young. She she uh, had seven of us, but she did a lot of drugs and stuff, and it caught up to her, like I said. But her personality and who she was as a person, man, it was beautiful. Yeah. You know, she was a beautiful person, man. Yeah. Like, she was hella hood. She have her little brandy, her little cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> she she yeah. the type she the type of get you know have her arm over you with yeah. the cigarette right on your face like you know like boy you know what you doing you know what I'm saying yeah giving and you a good message on my mom yeah, yeah yeah you know and yeah. just like very intelligent and stuff and spiritual believe in God as well yeah you know what so I mean did she come back into your life at a later time so I eventually ended up meeting my mom and stuff when I was in elementary. And that's kind of like what brought fluctuation to me and Andrea's connection. Because Andrea was so real. You feel me? Yeah. So she was just like, bruh, your mom come up, up, coming up in here, she going to mess up stuff. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. She ain't right in the head. She's still doing drugs. Yeah. And she trying to come up in here and get into your life and you already fine. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you my baby and ain't nothing wrong right now. I'm telling you that when this stuff start happening, it's going to... It's going to make shit bad. And that's exactly yeah. what happened. You feel me? So my yeah. mom came around and that's when I left Andrea's house. Not yeah. because I went to go live with my mom, just because yeah. I started acting up and just like, you know, just right. different things started happening. Yeah. So anyway, that was the time that my mom had come into my life. I had to be in like six or, or eight. I don't remember. Some around that age, before the age of 10. Yeah. And just throughout life, we... Had some visits or whatever, but it was yeah. never solid like that. Yeah. But when I was older, you know, in my 20s, early 20s, you know, she we talked on the phone every now and then and all of that. You know what I mean? But she was doing hospice. Uh, mm. She was living in the hospice, though. Okay. Because yeah. she was going down with her health at the time. Yeah. But to answer your question with all of that, long story short, uh, she called me one day. You know what I mean? Because I'll be... You know, I used to be in the streets and shit, man, and, like, doing all that with the homies. And, you know, I used to be homeless before, too. And yeah. I used to be pillar to pillar and stuff, man. And uh, I just remember my mom called me one day on the phone and was like, she was like, whatever girl, she was like, Ernest, because that's my name. <laughs> she was like, Ernest, whatever girl you talking to, that girl you talking to, you need to stop talking to that bitch. <laughs> She's like, you need to stop talking mm-hmm. to that bitch. Leave that bitch alone. And wherever you at right now, you need to pack up your stuff and go live with your sister. And I don't know, man. I be I believe in did God. You, did you listen? I believe in God, man. And I, I believe in messages and stuff from the universe and from the earth and stuff. And like yeah. your angels and stuff talking to you yeah. and all of that. You and this know? is your biological mother. So she has that connection with you. That was my biological yeah. mother, yeah. Whether present or not. On my mama. So... Yeah. That day, I packed up all my shit wow. where I was at. Yeah. I got up out of there. I remember all my homies was in the living room. There was everybody smoking and chilling. Mm-hmm. And my homie JoJo seen me. Like, everybody else is like, man, what the fuck you doing, bro? Like, all that. But JoJo, he knew. Like, he looked at me and was like, do your thing, bro. Like, you know. Yeah. All right, go ahead. You yeah. know what I'm talking about? He already, he didn't ask no question. He just saw on me, like, the energy. Like, yeah. he about to move on from this shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? So essentially, even with your mother maybe not being present in the beginning, but you had that connection. Most definitely, yeah. which is why I'm telling you, like, she she was a beautiful person. Yeah. And I, I only imagine that if she was healthy and stuff, that we would have yeah. had a, I would have been a mama's boy. You know yeah. what I'm saying? For sure, I would have been a mama's boy. Yeah. We would have had that connection and stuff. And yeah. I would have always came to her for advice and stuff like that, especially dealing with, you know, you pretty ladies out there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be playing at me. <laughs> um, but you know, yeah. Um, but, my mama though, man, she she had like she had good advice and stuff. Yeah. And so I'll say this because and I, I know you know this, I'm a mother of three boys. And there's a lot of privilege that comes with being a mother. Mm-hmm. Um, because boys have a sense of loyalty to their moms. Mm-hmm. It's just my kids' loyalty is in Heckable. It's crazy sometimes where I'm like, and so with that privilege, I try not to take advantage of it because it's hard, right? Like they're going to choose me above all, but I also understand that they're young men. They're going to go out. They're going to date. They're going to have partners. Um, but I also understand that that connection is real. Yeah. And when I was hearing you talk about your mom and how she called you out of that situation, it was like she was connected to you all throughout your life, whether mm-hmm. you knew it or not. For real, for real. Um, and then also, you know, the mother that raised you, Andrea, 
just sounds like an incredible human being because beautiful. We want to protect our babies, mm -hmm. you know, and that's and, but it's interesting because some things we just can't be protected from. Right. Um, and some of the things, some of the adversities that we face in life is actually what makes us us, you know. And so probably if you didn't have your story, yeah, we wouldn't get a chance to really enjoy your music. Man, you know, and if I didn't have that foundation and stuff, you know, I wouldn't be uh, articulate enough like from Andrea and um, Rodney. I feel mm -hmm. like they gave me my uh, intelligence. And yeah. stuff. So I have a this a thing on intelligence and like wisdom and stuff, yeah. you know? Wisdom, intelligence is not wisdom, you know? Right. Intelligence, intellect is how you are able to process mm -hmm. what is in front of you, understand it, mm -hmm. and be able to put it into action and fruition, into mm -hmm. your lifestyle. You know what I mean? Wisdom is things that you get from experience yeah. and stuff. You've experienced this, you've been through it, and you know how to deal with the situation. Yeah. You know, you could go through something and have the experience and then go through that again and not deal with it in the correct fashion. That right. is a low form of intelligence. Yeah. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? That's not intellect. You know, it, I feel like they both coincide with each other. Yeah, but, absolutely. Um, Andrea gave me my wit, my uh, my intellect, so that mm -hmm. I can understand the wisdom that is going to be coming to me, yeah, and use it for my life, yeah, and uh, put it out for other people too, and to be able to articulate it, yeah, and stuff. So you know, I feel like that is big for me is being able to articulate what you feel and how you know what's going on in your mind. Not a lot of people know how to do that right now. Yeah. you know what I'm saying, yeah. especially social media and. Techno technologically in the digital age right now is right. I just want to say for the record he brought up social media on this because I bring it up a lot because mm -hmm. um, I think that it can be great but I also think it's actually a hindrance in like how we do life together yeah um, but I also want to say your your mother you talked about the intellect with Andrea but the uh, wisdom with your mom because uh, I too you know I grew up my parents were on drugs right both mom and dad messed around um, so I was blessed to be able to live with my grandparents. But it was strife nonetheless, right? Because I went from living with my mom to living with my grandparents and then being like, yo, why she don't want me? You know, what? like, why am I not there with my mom? I questioned that. And then my dad was pretty much a rolling stone, so. Yeah, mine's too. You know, he showed up um, when he could and when it was convenient for him. Uh, but I think that's where a lot of my wisdom comes from. Because mm. a lot of it comes from watching my parents and like their addictions and like how my other siblings really suffer from it. Um, and then how I want to live my life differently and right. then also be like a different mom to my kids. It's yeah. like for me, it's like, it's not a question. My kids going to be with me regardless, you know, but because I had the abandonment from my parents because it was like they both was around. We, I grew up in a crest. They live right around the corner, but mm. I wasn't living with neither one of them. Mm -hmm. And so that wisdom piece is big. Yeah, yeah. it's big, man. Because this world, <clears throat> excuse me, this world um, is not nice. No, it's you not. You know, this world is built off of sin and stuff. And uh, if you're not, I'm not religious. I want to just clarify that. I'm very spiritual and I'm about the earth and about the people of the earth and about facts and, and knowledge and history and stuff like that. And knowledge of the soul and knowledge of self is like the foundation of it all, you yeah. know. But um, the earth, though, is built off of sin or you could say just like bad morality and stuff, you know, evil energy right now, you know. And, um, you know, it makes it a little difficult to like kind of do the right things and stuff. Yeah. You know, it takes a lot of discipline yeah. and strength and the digital age and things that we in right now can kind of like veer us away from that a little bit, I feel yeah. like, you know, and uh, leave us unconnected. Yeah. Unconnected, man. That's that's the word I'm looking for is disconnect from self, disconnect from each other. Absolutely. Disconnect from what's right, disconnect from what's wrong. You don't even know, nobody knows. Everybody's disconnected. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because we're so distracted. So much it's, distraction. It's, e it's easy to become distracted um, and then just social media specifically. So I, I wanted to bring this up because you and I had this conversation yeah. where I was like, yo, why you post that and take it down? Do you remember that conversation? Man, <laughs> we can talk about that. <laughs> we can talk about that. We can talk about it? Okay. Uh, yeah. So I'm just kind of getting into the, the, you know, this new energy of having this confidence in myself, man. And like having pride and 
I have lived a lifestyle of like being reclusive and stuff and like keeping to myself a lot. So now that I'm a music artist, I have to show myself more, man. I got to post more content and do all these things that makes me so uncomfortable. And sometimes be a little vulnerable. I was just going to say that right after. So uncomfortable and so vulnerable. Like, like, you know, like my shell is off, you know, and, um, I'm still working through being comfortable with that. Yeah. You know, even when I'm just expressing myself, you know, I feel like eyes be on me, you know, and like yeah. people be watching me and they they want to know what's inside of my head. But I'm a person who can, I can fail sometimes at, uh, I can be unsuccessful in not worrying about what other people think. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I and get it, into that zone sometimes. Like, even, what is people thinking? What are they judging? You know? Yeah. And it's not even really like the failing. I think we're all just trying to test it. I, I think I said to you, I'm like, we're all really just figuring it out. Like, every day is a new day and I wake up. And some people look at me as like, she's so put together. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm just figuring it You give me shit. that notion, sure. You know, I'll be like, I'm trying to be like Ebony when I grow <laughs> up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you it's, be having it together, man. I got to well, say that for sure, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean... I'm a I'm a learning, growing, evolving human being just like you. Mm-hmm. And I think we're all in different walks of life and what I perceive as success for me is going to be different. So it's it's always going to look differently, but I wake up some days and I'm just figuring this shit out. Yeah. Like for real. Like I'm I try to be the best mom, but what does that really mean? I always say like no matter how great of a mom I am, my kids still going to need therapy. Oh, my mom at all. You know? Um They going to still need we all build pressure yeah. and stuff, you know? Many build pressure, few release. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So, like, you know, we all human at the end of the day. Like, and, uh, and we all have a capacity. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. All, we all have a cup that gets filled and stuff, and we yeah. have to empty it sometimes. Yeah. So we're not always able to, and we have to take accountability of that as humans and, and be aware of that and stuff that, yo, man, they might not have the capacity to deal with my trauma or my, my situation right now. Right. You know? So let me... Give them them their space and stuff and do what I need to do to release. And then when they ready to, you know what I mean? And when your loved ones is ready, they will reach out to you like, hey, when what's on your, what burden you got on your back? Let me get some of that. You know what I'm talking about? So I'm just saying that to say like, yeah, they're your kids. They, you know, but they still going to need, they still going to need somewhere to release. Right. Absolutely. And, stuff. and they not always going to be able to throw that on mama yeah. and stuff. You know, when they get more mature, they're going to know that and take accountability of that if they really love you. Yeah. Well, you let's let's dig into that a little bit because mm. we're talking about release, right? Yeah. Um, and I want to get into the music, but healthy release for black men. What, what does that space even look like? Because I just... I, I was talking about this on my last podcast where I'm like, I do feel like women are supported in a number of ways, right? Like we support each other. Um, there's so many, so many resources for us to tap into, but I don't see a lot for black men. And I don't know what, you know, how, how you find that space. I know you just got, you've got some incredible friendships. So I'll say that I've seen that, but what is like that other than your music, like your release, where do you find solace? Okay. So I'm hearing two questions. Okay. One is, you know, what is a healthy release for a black man, Mm -hmm. for black men, in my opinion? And also, what is my... Your specific. Specific for Mm -hmm. my individuality, like my release? What is my solitude area? Like, you know, how do I do that? How do I practice that? First question, my first answer, and this is just all by opinion. I'm not a guru. I'm not a professor anywhere. But I've been through my things of life, and I have my uh, thoughts on things and stuff. But I feel like black men, you know, we have the resources and stuff out there to support each other and to fellowship with each other. But uh, we've been living a lifestyle and stuff so long of separation and who got the bigger car, who got the, can I say whatever I, I can say whatever? You've, okay. You, yeah, who got the bigger car, who got the bigger, who got more bitches, who got, you know, who's selling more drugs, man. Like, you know, and that's kind of like been our our bar and stuff. And we've been taught that really through hip hop culture, through the mainstream media, because I feel like it's the, I ain't going to even get into like that type of stuff, but you know, there's people who uh, design that to put that stuff in our face. And we just been living a lifestyle of that. Mm -hmm. So um, I feel like black men need to practice discipline more, you know, discipline and, uh, uh, 
Discipline, yes. Discipline yeah. is a very big thing. Discipline is doing what you hate to do, but you do it like you love it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's what Mike Tyson said. And shout out to Mike Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just I saw that quote. Yeah. Um, healthy forms of discipline. Because I, 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 I got to ask. Man, healthy forms of discipline, obviously, a, a big major thing is exercise and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, obviously there's so much stuff being put into the foods and yeah. And uh, into the air and like just all these things. So exercise is really good and breathing and stuff because breathing clears the mind, cleanses cleanses the blood, and also uh, refreshes like your brain and everything and your spirit and all that stuff. So yeah, and it also grounds you to the earth's energy and stuff. Like practicing breathing exercises and uh, helps open your third eye and your chakras and all that type of stuff. So. You know, breathing exercise is the first thing because that's taking care of you as an individual, as a human being and stuff. Yeah. And I feel like that's really good. Also, uh, doing some form of studying and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing for black men, we got to know ourselves. Mm -hmm. We got to know where yeah. we from. Yeah. We got to know where our bloodline, our lineage, our heritage and stuff because we've been taught so much throughout time of that we from over here and they from over there and we got Africans that look at African Americans like y'all ain't part of us. Like we're not a part of the diaspora. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. So like, uh, you know, know yourself, man. Study yourself and, and all of that type of stuff. I feel like that would take us so much further as a race of yeah. people, man. It's finding out who the hell we are, not who the white man said that we is or not who this book, like, nah, none of that. Like, you know who you is. You know where your family from. And I feel like that should be taught in school. Like, that should be the first curriculum yeah. in public school. You know who you are as an individual and stuff. When you know who you are, then you know, like, what your purpose is on right. the earth and what you meant here to do. Yeah. And then when you act upon that, then I feel like you really making the world go around and stuff. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because you're doing what you meant to do, not go to school and study science and, and uh, world history, which is a fucking damn lie anyway. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, it's not doing your human purpose. So, long story short, just know who you are, man, as a, as a person and find out who that is. And that might take some years and stuff, but it's worth it. It's worth the curriculum. It's worth the time. It's worth the studying. And, yes, you yeah. know, it's worth it for our people, man, for sure. Because everybody else seems to know who the hell they is except for us. Yeah. And and some of some of that is for us who have reached that, that level of trying to really— understand ourselves like you said know where we, know where that came from um but a, a part of it is we can't excuse the fact that we were stolen right so true um and there's that and there's a lot of trauma attached to that and it's really hard to understand where you came from when like you said even in our history books so much of who we are as people has been lost and lie and, lost. and they're lied we've, we've been lied to so there's that. Um, but because you're on the throne today, I want to kick in another little additional question. And then we're going to get to like just really specifically your outlets. Um, but last podcast, I brought a woman on. And um, what I've been trying to do, I'm really hoping in 2023, we can leave this divide between the black man and the black woman. Uh, because there's just the demasculation and the emasculation yeah. of the women and yeah. making the belittling the men and stuff yeah. in society and, and all of that. Like, yeah, there's a lot of that's going on. But what people don't know is back in the days and stuff, there was this thing called the Willie Lynch letter and stuff, you know, or the Willie Lynch law. Mm -hmm. And Willie Lynch was a slave master in the in what the year I think it was like. I want to say like the 1702 or something like mm -hmm. that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Some long time ago. And I remember, uh, you know, Willie Lynch was the, the, the most prominent slave master. And he would have meetings with other slave masters and tell them because everybody would go to him and ask him how he's has everybody controlled yeah, and indoctrinated control like this. Yeah. How to yeah. control the Negro. And Willie Lynch, he made a whole entire instruction list for all these slave masters yeah. on how to control the Negro and that this, if you apply this method, that it will last for at least 500 years and yeah. stuff. You apply this method, it's going to condition them for 500 years guaranteed. And that's what we end and stuff. Yeah. And I can guarantee you if you go around and ask a young, a lot of young black men about the Willie Lynch letter or about, uh, what did I say? Um, Jim Crow. 
You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The Jim Crow laws or anything like that. They a lot of majority of cats won't know. Yeah. Yeah. And that's part of knowing thyself. Right. Because that's what's been put on to yeah. us and stuff. Specifically us. Yeah. Not nobody so, else. You know. So, so dive into that because we know part of that was taking the man out of the home. Yes. Right? Yeah. Um, and separating us, right, from our leadership and breaking him like a horse yeah. and stuff. And um, yeah, taking him out the home and uh, you know, putting more responsibility on the woman yeah. and uh, doing things in front, uh, doing things to the woman in front of the man, so that you know the man feels even more powerless and yeah. things like that. Also, too, psychological warfare in a way too, like you know, making them feel like like I'm your best friend. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like what the government does. We got welfare for you. We got these benefits. We yeah. got this and that yeah. and all of that. But in reality, though, we just keeping you down. We yes. keeping you down. Yeah. We keeping a you control. Cycle. Keeping mm-hmm. you depending on us. You need yeah. to depend on us and stuff. You know. And I feel like that is a, a big foundation to the separation. Yeah. And stuff that's going on is that everybody don't know how to go within and. and we don't know how to use each other. Yeah. We got to go and use something else from an external source yeah. and stuff because you don't know what you got inside of you, you right. know? Like, um, don't even know how to sit down together and have a conversation. No. Um, Disconnecting to, what we was talking about earlier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, or how to, like, we can sit here and I could just try to understand you, whether I agree or not, right, with the points. And I think that's been lost. Yeah. Um, and like you said, going back to our history and understanding that there was forms— um, of manipulation to keep us apart. Um, and I, like one of the reasons why I wanted to bring you back was just to the podcast because I'm like, how do we have these conversations? How do we do better, right? Because we're all hurting to a degree. Yeah. And we're all trying to find uh, healthy relationships and love and and healthy friendships. And that was one of the things that, like our last conversation, when you was like, I'm going to support you. Like, we locked in. And like, how do we lock back in with each other? And I know that's a that's a big question. I feel like what I was saying earlier is really powerful, is yeah. knowing yourself. Yeah. You know, you don't know who you are. You're going to try to be over there in that crew to validate mm-hmm. yourself. Yeah. You don't know who you are. You're going to try to go get that chain and stuff to make yourself look shiny so that you can, this is yeah. me, I'm this chain. Yeah. You don't know who you are, you're going to try to go get that mansion or the bitches and, you know, all of these things to try to validate yourself and yeah. stuff, you know? And it's because you don't know who you are. You don't even know that you're a king and stuff. And that doesn't just go for black men. This goes around the world, you know, to yeah. everyone, man, to all men and women, to know thyself. And to look inside to see the royalty inside of your soul, to see the gold in your soul and stuff. And I feel like that right there will help bring connection with your own, like your own culture and also interculturally, like mix, mixing yeah. and mingling and stuff. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Not romantically. I'm just talking about fellowship. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Like fellowship yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Knowing yourself is very important. Yeah. Yeah. So... With everything that you've you've learned, where you aspire to be, what do you want people to draw from your music? Because I think a lot of like what we're talking about is really ingrained in like br- building bridges. Uh, what do you want people to know from your music in that aspect? I'm human, you know. Um, I'm human. I've been through so much stuff in my life and stuff, and uh, I was supposed to be, you know, cut down and not here you know what i'm saying and i uh i survived through that stuff i i went and did the, all the stuff we talking about in this interview i at some point in time in my life i grabbed those things to push myself forward and to survive and not only to survive but to thrive and stuff you know so throughout this time you know i feel like a lot of the people that are famous and celebrities and stuff and that's on tv that's put in front of the the masses you know, a lot of that stuff is hella fake, man, you know, and I want people to see more of a down to earth side of things and stuff, you know, more relatable. Like, you know, we all in this together. You feel me? No matter how much money somebody got or how much attention, validation or followers on social media, or whatever the hell, like we all in this together and stuff. And that's the message that I'm trying to bring 
with my overall brand and stuff is push love. Yeah. Eternal greatness. Eternal greatness. I am rocking one of the t-shirts. Yes. Uh, I am too as well. So, yes. you know, we so out we here. So we kind of twinsies today. Oh, my mama. Yeah, yeah. we twins. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, like uh, pull that from me, man, that this is a strong individual. Where did you gather that strength from to survive, man? Where do you gather this uh this this notion in your head to be kind with people when this world is crazy as hell. Like how do you how do you have the energy to fellowship with people, man, and bring the good vibes and stuff? Uh, how do you how do you spread knowledge and how are you spreading your knowledge? How are you articulating yourself like this? Because like I said, it's not common, man. Like you know, people be on some stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like they people don't be studying, people don't be reading books, people don't be fellowshipping with each other, teaching each other things. Like yeah. people like to get together and go to the club and go do drugs and go and do all them extra things, but you right. rarely see niggas like, man, let's go meet up over here, man, like and do this book real quick. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or like, let's go over here and do these breathing exercises or something. Yeah. You don't really be seeing a lot of that type of stuff. You feel me? Yeah. So I want y'all to pick that from my music, man, that that's what it's on is 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 about health and wealth and fellowshipping. Even though I look tough, man, I got scars on my face and all of that. Like, I'm all about love and, like, kindness, man. And, mm-hmm. like, you know, I'm working on myself so much to be more vulnerable and more transparent. Uh, I feel like it makes me a better artist. You feel me? And I'm all about Sacramento, man. You know, Sacramento, I was born and raised. Yeah, I love my city. Shout uh, out Sacramento. Yes, man, Gotta, Sacramento, yeah. man, it's the it's my town, and uh, I love all the people in Sacramento, man. I'm <laughs> working so hard to get y'all on to my movement and onto this love and onto this eternal greatness. But yeah, that's what my music is about, though. It's just those vibes right there and that frequency, that sound wave. Yeah, that and overall any, thing. Anything new. That the folks can be looking out for, cause I I I know you putting in the work. So what you yeah, got coming our way, man? You know, I had I'm I have so many aspirations, man. You know, I'm trying to build my brand up right now. You know, and that's been taking me a little time, I, I, cause I've been trying to figure out this artist thing. I've been making music since 2020 mm-hmm. and stuff. We going into 2024. It's about to be my fourth year, and. I'm just so focused on building my brand right now, man. People ain't even buying your music no more. They buying your brand and all of yeah, that stuff. Yeah. So trying to get my brand right. Um, and that consists of me consistently posting content, you know. So I'm working on a lot of videos mm-hmm. and stuff. I'm shooting. Uh, Foundation is one of my... I'm shooting so much stuff for the Black Boy uh, album but we are shooting a full length video for Foundation in a couple of weeks. It's gonna be in black and white. And we're gonna have low rider bikes and low rider cars. That's and what's up. It's yeah. gonna be some dope ass shit, like some real West Coast shit. Uh, but other than that, I'm doing a bunch of shorts and stuff and uh, chopping all those things up with a lot of my songs that are coming out and stuff that's on Black Boy because I was a little late on rolling out uh, Black Boy and stuff. So. Now, that's kind of like what I'm on is getting yeah. visual content for all of those songs, breaking it up. I'm working on Beast Season Volume 2. Uh, I had to push it back a couple of times because I'm a perfectionist and I like to make my stuff sound yeah. really nice. So, Beast Season Volume 2, that's coming out very, very soon. Okay. We'll and be on the lookout for that. More merchandise. Yes. I have like you want to tell folks where they can find the t-shirts so me and my guy we working on the website right now and it's pretty much like 90 percent done so by the end of this month i'll have all that stuff tied up but you can go on it's probably going to be on big cartel eg the beast big cartel and stuff Uh, i'll have it just follow my social media just get in tune Get in tune with me. Come forth. Yeah. Come join me. You know <laughs> you what I'm saying? Definitely go follow. Listen, Queen's Vantage listeners, supporters, go follow EG the Beast. He is on, well, you're on all streaming platforms. All streaming platforms. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, all streaming platforms. Trying to just keep it going. I'm on Instagram. I need to get more on TikTok. Yeah. More, more TikTok. We working on that. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then what else was I about to ask you? Oh, outside of the music. Are there any aspirations outside of the music that you're looking for toward the future? So perhaps it's not right now, but sometime later in the future, things that you want to do beyond the music. I want to get on screen, you know, 
And I want to, I think I could be really good at doing like acting and stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've already had some testing out with that. And I've had some uh, movie people come up to me already this year. Yeah. And ask me if I would like, to, if I'll be interested in doing that. So eventually, yes, I want to get on screen. I have really good direction. When we doing music videos, I have good ideas on how to like, this should be done and where you should be standing at. And yeah. so that's like future, future, future. But in long, uh, like what we say, like midterm goal, I would say, you know what yeah. I mean? Next few years or so, I would like to try to get on screen okay, and test that out. Um, but the really important stuff for me is being able to go and speak to people, you know, yeah. speaking to uh, kids and stuff, y young black kids, young minority kids that's went through what I went through, yeah. but ain't doing so well. You yeah. know, and they don't, they're not surrounded by the right individuals and stuff, and they might feel like they ain't got nothing or they lost yeah. and all of that. I want to be like that beacon of light for these individuals and stuff and really stick to that and be very loyal and passionate yeah. about that because I, love that. Yeah. I needed that, man. You yeah. know what I mean? I needed that real bad and I didn't have it like that. Yeah. But I want to be able to do that for a lot of young men and tell y'all that, you know, the sky is not the limit. It's so much more beyond the sky and stuff, you know? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yes. All right. So we're going to move on to this other part of the segment. Okay. That I call Taboo Talk. What was it called? Taboo Talk. Taboo Talk. Yes. Okay. I'm a little nervous about this Taboo <laughs> Talk. What's what's that yeah, about? You, sh you should be. You should be. It's it's my wow factor. Okay. Um. So Taboo Talk. Here at Queen's Vantage Podcast, it is uh, an empowerment podcast, which you know. Yeah. He's like, where are you going with this? Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's all about uplifting women. Right. And, you know, I come from a family of many men. Mm-hmm. Many men. Many men. And um, one of the things that I always like to talk to men about, especially those who use the word bitch. So we're going to title this Taboo Talk. Who's that? <laughs> Who's that bitch? <laughs> so um, I know just like the word nigga, we right. try to use it in a way to say it's endearing. Right. Or or not. Right. When it comes to, to the word bitch. Right. Specifically. Right. So... I'm always curious to know when I hear a man use that word. Right. Because um, I see my my women as queens mm -hmm. and nothing less than. So when I hear you say the word, what do you want us women to take from that? I feel like, I feel like it's three levels. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Tell us about it. You got the hoes, you got the bitches, and you got the women. You know what I mean? The hoes, we already know who them is. You know what I'm saying? They out there ripping and running the streets and stuff. You got the bougie ones who really ain't even like, you know, whatever. You pretty and all of that, but you just want attention and they, you know, you feel we, like they lack substance. Yeah, you know, they lack substance and okay. stuff, and and they just want to be seen in the spotlight, limelight, dress nice all the damn time, gotta look good all the damn time, don't know okay. how to read a book. You know, okay. them is the bitches, man. You know, they okay. ain't out fucking everybody, but they just bitches, though. You know, they went through past traumas. They don't know how to deal with it. They acting crazy and stuff. Those are the bitches. And then you got the women. You got the Ebony's. You know what I'm saying? Those Thank are the you. women. And those the women are in the same uh, category as the queens and stuff. You carry yourself like a woman. You carry yourself like a queen. And I feel like those are women. This is all my opinion. This is just coming from me. You know what I mean? That, this I mean, ain't the this facts. is your vantage point. This is That's just what, this ain't the here. facts, but yeah. I'm saying like, you know, um, women, in my opinion, and I didn't even grow up around, my mom wasn't around all that. So I had to kind of go through life and figure yeah. out what I think, what my perception of a woman slash queen is. And I just feel like that's just a really responsible individual. You know, mm -hmm. somebody who carries himself with some damn class and stuff. Mm -hmm. Somebody who does know thyself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And if they don't, they are totally aspiring to learn themselves every yeah. day on a daily basis. You know, if you do have children, you dare for your children. You know, you the queen of the house with your children and you taking care of them. And, uh, yeah. you know, um, you have aspirations. Yeah. You have aspirations, ambitions, and goals and stuff that can't nobody interfere with, not even your man. Yeah. You know, like, this is my stuff. If you can't get with it, then you got to, you know, get over there or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's queen shit to me. You know yeah. what I mean? And those are the type of women I'm, I'm attracted to. I don't yeah. like 
a woman who ain't got nothing going on for herself and stuff. And that doesn't mean you got to be hella rich and having your nails done and all that. But yeah. what is it that you aspire to do, you yeah. know, that is beyond looking beautiful and like shake, you know, or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I you think, know what I'm saying. I, I think you're getting at what I'm saying. So, so Queens Vantage is for everyone, right? Mm -hmm. And so we have women in all different walks of lives. And so thank you for your categories, yeah. for sure. Um, but what I'm hoping to do in this conversation with Taboo Talk is how, again, how do we build bridges? Because I think how you've how you've described it is like those are women who are evolving over a period, hopefully evolving, right? I and hope so, so, yeah. Um, and so and to aspire to be coming into what we consider that queen level. And at different facets of life, people are responding. And I think what we're seeing a lot of women do right now is they're responding to the treat their treatment from men. Mm. And so, you know, if they can get attention, because let's be real, women shake ass because men look. I'll be looking. Right? <laughs> right? I'll be looking like, damn. <laughs> so, oh, shit. All right, my bad. Oh, bad. Oh. So, women are responding. So, I also, you know, we have to be responsible for ourselves. But what I'm also encouraging black men to do is also be responsible for how you react to those selves, right? Because if you're giving them that negative attention, then that's what they're going to seek. Um, and not all women are blessed to have a father in the home or a mother in the home that are instilling them the values. And so sometimes it comes to their own adversities. Uh, but I, was, I wanted to bring that up because I'm like, how do we move women along, right? Because if you keep... Not you specifically, but yeah, men I what you're are saying. feeding those, uh, what they call them, demon time, whatever now. So if you're feeding a demon, then a de demon will continue to grow. It's It was so hard for me to kind of stay on the subject when we was talking about the other stuff last time. Uh -huh. But like I was saying, the foundation of knowing yourself mm -hmm. and stuff it just kind of makes you be able to interact with others who also know themselves yeah. as well. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You know yourself? You know yourself? I know myself too. Oh, man, come on. Let's get together, man. Now yeah. let's get to know each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can't get to know each... Love, you know? Love, you can't... You can't give... You can't receive love if you don't know how to give it. And you yeah. can't even give it if you don't know how to receive it. Yeah. And you can't do either of the two if you don't understand it. Yeah. You dig what I'm talking about? Absolutely. Yeah. You got to understand the foundation of love so that you can be able to give and receive it. Right. You know, you have to understand the foundation of self so that you can be able to understand the foundation of someone else, too. Yeah. You have to, so you can get to know somebody. Yeah. Can't get to know nobody if you don't know your damn self. That's true. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Can't uh, take care of nobody if you can't take care of yourself. And yeah. I'm always calling AJ into this. So, AJ, we were just talking about this, right? Because I was saying on the last podcast, like... I fucks with myself hard. Right. <laughs> right? Like, I really rocks with myself. Mm -hmm. And you're absolutely right. We can't do anything until we understand ourselves. Yes, that's a big foundation. So once we kind of get that shit in order, then we can fellowship yeah. with each other and stuff. Yeah. And also be able to, when you know yourself, you can be vulnerable. Yeah. And you can be open. You yeah. can tell somebody that they beautiful. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can say like, damn, you, you ain't got to be like, because you insecure and you got to be Mr. Tough and cool. Right. Like, damn, girl, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you looking, you know, you yeah. got ass or something. Yeah. Or like, man, I just want to tell you that you were really beautiful today. And I, I'm i not trying to holler at you or nothing. I'm right. just saying you are a very beautiful person. I can feel your aura. You look like you be on your stuff. And that's what I see on you yeah. and stuff. And I wanted to express that to you today. Yeah. Why? Because I know myself and I know that I'm a good man. And I know that I'm articulate and I can speak that way. I know that I'm open. So I'm being open to you and I'm telling you that. And I want you to know that about yourself. Yeah. That's what I've observed. Yeah. That takes a lot of uh, wisdom. Absolutely. It takes discipline. Yeah. Because you have to open your mouth. And do something that you probably uncomfortable doing, which yeah. is expressing love to somebody and expressing vulnerability. Yes. And shit. And that's you know exactly what I'm talking it. About? Absolutely. So that's what was a big thing for me was just knowing yourself, man. Yeah. You got to just go and just discipline yourself to go learn your foundation and stuff so that we can connect with each other. Yeah. Especially as us as black folks. And then yeah. we got to like do that. And then that's how we connect with our black women and yeah. stuff. The black men ain't really respecting the black women because they don't know they self. Yeah. That's a that's a whole other episode. A whole other it's episode. It's a whole other episode. It really is. I ain't gonna get too deep into yeah. that. But you know, that's the foundation of yeah. it. Yeah. And then that's how we fellowship with each other. We know who the hell we is and stuff. Absolutely. You yeah. know what I'm talking about? And and 
and we can be vulnerable with each other and uplift each other. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. That's the, I think, that's the I, facts. I will say that's one of the things, and I know we got to wrap because we're at time, but um, one of the things that I, I profoundly appreciated about you is that that your self-confidence is exuding, right? So it's there. And like you said, you meet people at that level. Um, and that you're not only just sure of yourself, but your sureness and self is like also wanting to uplift others. So I do, I deeply appreciate that. You know, one thing I hate you. though is that people can kind of get the notion that I'm being like too prideful of myself and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I just want people to know that it takes a lot out of my soul, man, to like show confidence and like show a lot of security because I don't come from that. So yeah. it takes a lot of yeah. out of me to show that I'm uh, having pride in what it is that I'm doing, that I'm proud of myself. Yeah. I'm not always searching for external validation. You know, I, I get a lot of that from God and from people around me that love me and yeah. also from myself. So it's not easy to do that. I just wanted to touch yeah. on that real quick. And, no, I'm, I'm glad that you did. You know, yeah. yeah. There was, there was a, a brief moment where you had wrote me and you were so vulnerable and I was like, oh my gosh like yeah. I welcome it right because I feel like I'm an yeah. I'm a, I'm a open book but we are at time yeah. um, I want you to tell my followers so Queen's Vantage please go follow EG to Beast his music is incredible he is not only just an incredible artist but he's an incredible human being and I've been so fortunate to get to know you yeah. um, but tell the people where they can find you uh, what's up y'all I'm EG to Beast Sacramento born and raised you can find me on all streaming platforms, EG, DA Beast, all one word. Find me on Instagram, all the social platforms as well. I'm just trying to do my thing and, uh, you know, get this stuff running off the flow and spread love around the world and fellowship around the world and uplift my black queens as well, man, and uplift the black kings most definitely too, man. Yeah. All kings and queens around the world, all skin colors. If you yeah. know you a king, I'm uplifting you. If you know you a queen, I'm uplifting you, man. Yeah. And can you give Queen's Vantage Podcast a shout out? Big shout out to <laughs> Queen's Vantage Podcast because this is the joint right here, man. So much love, so much good vibes. Yeah. Shout out to Ebony, man. She really is the queen, man. On my Thank mama, you. though, man. Such a good woman, such a good person, such an intellectual individual. So down to earth, man. And your soul most definitely got a Thank lot of you. gold in it, for sure, for sure. So, you know, I really appreciate Ebony, man. Thank you, Queen's Vantage Podcast, Ebony, AJ back there, Solify yeah. Studios. Yeah. Shout out to all <laughs> y'all, man. I love y'all. EG the Beast. I'm yeah. out. So that's been another episode of Queen's Vantage Podcast with EG the Beast. Listen, go over to our YouTube channel. This episode will be there so you don't want to miss it. Subscribe, hit notify. Hey, listen, if there's more that you want me and EG to talk about, leave it in the comments. Leave it in the comments. Listen, he family to the podcast. He's a part of the throne, so we will bring him back. Listen, if you're not following me on Instagram, go over there and hit that follow button.